The nice thing about Zimbabwe is they bushed back on the estate. They're very tame, so you see them. Normally in reserves, you don't see bushbuck because they're the smaller of the Nyala and Kudu family, and they get hammered by leopard and smaller predators. Here, they don't have a major predator other than python. The crown eagle might take very young bushbuck, but not the adults, they're just too big to handle. They tend to feed early morning, late afternoon. They've got three stomachs and they need to have time to digest all the leaves and stuff that they eat. And they will go and find a quiet place like the lodge gardens and they will go and chew the cud, literally. Bushbuck here are a bit different again because they're not chased. They do rest during the day, but most of the day you'll see them. If it's raining, they'll be out even during the day. They love wet foliage because then they're getting their water in as well. All our plantings that we did initially on the verges were the species that the bushbuck favoured. They breed quickly at every nine to 12 months. Carrying capacity on the estate has been worked out by Ezembelo Wildlife as one bushbuck per two hectares of land. And we have enough habitat on this site. Equates to about 100 hectares is proper prime bushbuck habitat between 50 and 60 animals. That's the figure you aim at. What really tells whether you have a lot or enough is the vegetation gets browsed very heavily. And so we use the vegetation as a measure. It's important to manage animals like that. Our bushbuck are sought after by other estates because they're tame. In the last between eight and 10 years, something like 600 animals have been taken away to other game reserves. We have to have permits. So there's a game capture team that comes in they have their own vet with them. And because they're so tame, we're able to get family groups. And that family unit get taken away. Bushbuck tend to be quite loose in their territories. When they're not breeding, and if a male isn't trying to protect a couple of females, you see the males interacting with each other. They're wonderful animals to have around. We initially decided to bring the impala in to add something different, something new to the estate, to add a bit of value, a little bit more diversity. Impalas would normally gravitate more to open areas and within the estate we'd expect them to spend most of their time on the golf course. Generally the rough areas, the outlying verges, that's where they'd be feeding most of the time. The impala are predominantly grazers, but they are mixed feeders, so there are certain times of the year where they would also be browsing. But the numbers introduced are small enough where there won't be any direct competition to our existing bushbuck. They were relocated to us specifically from another estate so that they aren't skittish. They are already accustomed to people and traffic volumes. It might be something new for the bushbuck who've been on the estate and have never seen impala before, but everyone seems to be getting on well. It's a new bunker, but they don't seem to cause any problems on the course. During the rut, during breeding season, males might fight, but we've decided we'll only introduce one male onto the estate, and every two or three years he'll be rotated. They would generally only carve once a year, We've worked closely with Parks Department. They guided us through the process. They've given us a carrying capacity number of 15 animals for the estate. You can't manage just one species. You've got to try and manage the whole spectrum of wildlife within the area. That's key to trying to manage this nature reserve. Because it is a nature reserve. 
I think we've got it right.